All right, it is 11 a.m. in Las Vegas. My name is Galliano Tiramani, one of the founders of Boxable, and we are ready to get started. The first thing I'll mention is there's a clickable link to read the offering circular, both uh, live in the Zoom and in the description below uh, when this video will be posted after the fact. So thank you everyone for coming uh, to learn more about Boxable. What, what we have going on here is uh, really absolutely amazing and I'd love for everyone to gain a really a full understanding of, of the vision. I'm gonna hopefully spend most of the time uh, in this webinar answering questions. I think that's usually how it goes. So please put your questions as, as we go into the Q&A. If you, if you look down at the bottom of your screen there in the Zoom, you'll see where it says Q&A. Uh, do not put your questions in the chat. I've disabled that, put them into the, the, the Q&A and then um, I'll get to them all at the end. Uh, uh, right now, I'm going to start with just a quick video while we wait for some more people to trickle in. Uh, that'll give anyone who's new to Boxable a, a better understanding. Then I'll jump over to a quick presentation uh, where I give you guys the overview of what we're working on and then the latest update. And then um, maybe we'll even walk around the factory a little bit and do some more questions out there. So I am uh, excited to get started and I am gonna fire up the video now. Hold on. No audio on this video, just a little music, just to give you guys a real quick intro. This video is a little bit old since the factory is built, but it gets the point across. All right, so. Once again, thank you everyone for coming. Really appreciate your interest in learning more about Boxable. We are uh, sitting here right now in the Boxable factory where we are producing houses. And as I mentioned earlier, please make sure to add your questions to the Q&A button at the bottom of the page. Uh, you can click on that, put your questions in there. I'll, a I'll answer them at the end. Uh, I suspect, suspect that will take up most of our time because people always have a lot of questions. So yeah, here's this little uh, slide deck I'm going to go through briefly. Um, but what we're trying to do here is, is make building construction compatible with, with mass production. That's the goal. And if we achieve that, it's, it's going to be uh, a really big deal. Um, so the team for Boxable it has grown tremendously in the last few months. We're up to around 200 employees now. But it started out with myself, my father, Paolo, and Kyle Denman. We started working on this back in 2017. Back then it was just uh, just an idea, just some drawings and a few guys making some grandiose claims. But uh, you know, look, look where we are now. Things have really happened. We've, we've managed to really make things happen. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, and yeah, you know, we did start in 2017. We went through a lot of R&D and, and testing and eventually brought up a prototype unit to, to display at a, a show in Las Vegas and people were interested. So we kind of kept going uh, and then 
uh, early last year, we decided let's do it. Let's set up the factory. So we set up the, so we went ahead and pulled the trigger on this 170,000 foot building that I'm sitting in now um, and set up the factory. And by October, we were producing houses and now we're producing about two houses per day. So pretty cool, pretty, pretty fast uh, as far as everything's happening. And uh, we're really excited about what's to come in the future. So the uh, kind of the core innovations behind Boxable are all directed towards making building construction compatible with the factory environment. So you have um, pretty much all the modern products in the world, whether it's a car, a television, a sneaker, an iPhone, they're all produced on an assembly line. And there's a reason for that. An assembly line works really well and it's really fast and it's really inexpensive and it's really high quality. And that's the way we produce things ever, ever since you know Henry Ford championed it back in the day. And it's, um, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's the way everything's built except for the most part for housing. So you have right now about 90% of building construction and housing being built in the old school method of doing it by hand, building you know one at a time um, in a custom manner on site. So it's slow and expensive and there's problems as a result, there's uh, housing affordability problems and availability problems. So uh, we think that if we can make it work in the factory, which uh, others have kind of failed to do, um, that it can really have a huge impact in, in driving down costs. So. There's a bunch of things we need to do to make that possible. It all starts with shipping though. The reason, the, the single main reason why buildings are not built in the factory is they're just, they're too big to ship. And even companies that do try to build them in the factory have a huge problem. Uh, so, you know, factory built housing does exist. Of course, you've heard of a manufactured home or a trailer home, but even, you know, those guys have, have really failed to, to kind of grow and gain market share. Uh, they only account for about 10% of the market. So you can imagine like that you, you tried to buy an automobile and uh, you, you order a, a Ford truck and some guys show up at your house with a bunch of pieces of wood and welding torches and started hammering it together. That would seem crazy. Uh, and it would be ridiculous and expensive and inefficient and all that. But that's what they're doing with housing. And that's what everyone's used to. Uh, and the reason for that, it's, it's it's too big to ship. So that was the first problem we had to solve. And by making our houses shippable, highway legal, shipping at the lowest possible cost without actually compromising on the design or anything, that's gonna enable scaled factory mass production. And when I say scaled factory mass production, I don't even mean this huge factory behind me. I mean the next level, which is, you know, you got a picture on this slide, what you see with automobiles. So that's really the best example of modern mass production. They are putting out, you know, one car per minute in most of these factories. It's absolutely uh, amazing what they do. They have huge automation, they have huge scale, they have huge bulk purchasing power, and they're able to drive the cost of those automobiles way, way down. So we think that because we can finally ship these buildings, we're gonna be able to scale production to a, a crazy level and push the costs way down. So the big difference here between ex existing factory built housing is if you look at the other factory guys, they can't ship that far from the factory without it costing too much and not being uh, efficient. So basically they end up with these small regional factories. They can never have scaled production. So they have small regional factories all over the place where they're still doing everything in, in a small scale old school method by hand. So our idea is that because we can now ship without, you know, blowing up the budget, we can scale into an absolutely monster factory and get to these le crazy levels of efficiency and push price down. And that's the goal for Boxable is just to push the cost down so far that it becomes, you know, extremely affordable to do housing. It, it, it ends up faster, uh, um, you know, higher quality, all that. So um, you know, that's, that's where we think we're headed and we have a bunch of innovations to make that possible. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, you know, we do have the shipping technology, which is kind of the key that enables us to do everything else. There's much more behind Boxable than just the shipping, but that's what's going to allow us to do everything else. So we have these uh, 20 foot wide rooms. They fold up to eight and a half feet wide. That makes them highway legal. That means basically we can ship what would take a traditional factory built house company two expensive wide loads and we can ship it on one highway legal load and the big difference between a, a wide load and a, a highway legal load is that you're going to incur all these extra costs like 
uh, follow car where you have not only the truck carrying the load, but then you have another driver, in another car with flags on it behind, sometimes two, sometimes police escorts, restricted routes, extra permits, restricted travel times, like a total nightmare to ship something down the road that's way too big to fit on the road. So all that's gone for Boxable. We are now shipping, uh, you know, 20 foot wide room it, at, in an eight and a half foot wide shipping dimension down the highway, fully finished kitchen, bathroom, electrical, plumbing, windows, all of it, everything we could possibly do in the factory is done in the factory where it belongs. And this is such a big deal. I can't stress this enough. And really, no one else can do this. No one else can come close. The other solutions are ship an expensive wide load or ship an eight foot wide room. And who wants to live in an eight foot wide room? There's a whole bunch of other problems surrounding that kind of thing. So, you know, this is like so cool. And then beyond that shipping innovation, we've now being able to dive in and, and take out other problems. So when we think about building in a factory, most other factory guys are building using lumber, wood and nails, just like they do it on site in all of North America. So they take hammers and, and nails and little pieces of wood and they hammer them together. So that is a great way to do it on site. But we think if you're in the factory, there's a different set of possibilities. And so we've actually taken the time to re-engineer everything. Uh, so our buildings do not use any of these traditional building methods, any of these tr traditional materials. We have totally different equipment. Uh, this is completely reinvented and it's pretty cool. Um, what we've been able to do, uh, one important thing we've been able to do is dramatically reduce the component count within the building. So like a traditional building is going to have you know, a thousand nails in it, hundreds of pieces of wood, all these different parts. We have these bigger pieces, much less of them. Um, they assemble together rapidly. They're all cut by CNC equipment to precision subcomponents. So right now, even at this early stage of this first factory, right out here, this uh, kind of manual process that we're doing now, we're building an entire wall. So like the whole front wall of the casita, we're building that in about uh, 20 minutes. And then, uh, if you look at building a traditional wall, there's no chance they're building a whole wall in 20 minutes. And that's just at this level. We actually have new equipment coming soon where we're gonna be upgrading that panel assembly line out there. And that's gonna bring that 20 minutes down to four or five minutes. So then even in this early stage, if we're cranking out one wall panel at four or five minutes, how can anyone compete with that? It's gonna be kind of absolutely amazing. Uh, one other thing that's important to mention is the building system we're working on here is not just about the casita you see online. Although we've had an absolutely insane levels of demand for that casita, that is not the end goal. The end goal is a building system that can build most building types, most places on the entire planet. So the upside for Boxable is absolutely uh, huge because we're saying our system can build a thousand unit apartment building. It can build a single family residential. They can all be semi-custom. We can build a little casita and everything in between. So eventually when we're ready, we'll get into this larger building system and it will just open up our total attainable market even more. So, you know, I can't stress enough how big this is, how big this idea is. You have building construction being like one of the top five or top three biggest industries in the world. This is a multi-trillion dollar market. And I'm saying that our system can handle all of it or almost all of it. Um, we we uh, uh, are starting with that casita, however. And it's interesting because when we first had the idea to start with that little casita, which is a little 20 by 20 studio apartment, we said, we'll target this towards accessory dwelling units, backyard houses in, in California. And we expected, you know, maybe sell a few hundred, but that's not what happened. People went totally nuts for this thing. So now we have a wait list with over a hundred thousand names on it. And it's just completely blown our minds that, uh, there's so many use cases and beyond backyard accessory dwelling units, we just have like every idea under the sun to, to use these rooms for. So it's like, you know, workforce housing, low income uh, uh, villages, disaster relief, um, the ADUs, like so much stuff. So, you know, we have our hands full just making these casitas. And I think, you know, we could we could set up a factory 10 times bigger than this and still just make casitas and sell them all day long. So pretty cool to, to get lucky with this kind of staple product right off the bat. And um, let's see what else. So uh, one other thing to mention about the buildings that, you know, we have redesigned them, as I mentioned, we have re-engineered them, we are using different materials. And one of the results uh, of that re-engineering is a better building. And, you know, the first and foremost, the redesign was aimed at reducing the cost and increasing the speed to build. 
but we were able to pick carefully the building materials, engineer uh, smartly and dial it in to meet all the other requirements, meet and exceed all the other requirements that you have for a building. And the idea there was that we want to have one universal building solution that works all over the planet for all the different environmental conditions. So we didn't want to build one casita for Florida and have a whole other design for earthquakes in, in California. We thought, let's just exceed all these requirements. And you know we pretty much managed to do it. So the energy efficiency on these things is off the charts. All of them have hurricane wind rating on them. All of them are snow low rated. All of them are water resistant fire. So you know the buildings themselves are stronger and safer and higher quality than the house I live in now and probably the house you live in now. So that's really, you know, pretty, pretty significant and uh, pretty, pretty, pretty important that not only are we trying to sell a product that's much lower cost and readily available, but also just higher quality and better as well. Um, I think that's about it for this slideshow. I'm going to show you one other video in just a second. Uh, let me just speak a little more. So uh, I mentioned before that we, we got in here in uh, October, started producing houses. Now we are producing about two per shift and things are going really well. Uh, the company also was lucky enough to get a large order from the federal government for 150 houses for military base housing. So that was where we started and we got to dive right in, go from like a prototype into this huge factory and start producing houses. And we did it. Uh, we set it all up. We did everything we said we were going to do. We started producing houses and we shipped 156 of them to the federal government and completed that order uh, all through the pandemic, all through supply chain and inflation issues. You know, we just uh, breezed right through all that and, and got it done. So pretty amazing. Um, really, you know, my compliments to our, our team here for making that all happen. You know, I think a lot of other companies would have struggled to, to get it up and running. But, but we pulled it off and it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. And I'm really impressed with everyone. Um, so now that we finished that order, we're basically taking everything we've learned there and we're improving everything. So we're improving the product. We're improving the manufacturing procedures. Um, we have a whole bunch of new equipment coming in to build uh, more, uh, to, to, to increase, to increase the, the production rate and, you know, so much exciting stuff happening here. And then, um, you know, we, we also have really big plans to kind of go from this uh, initial prototype factory into something much bigger. And what what I'm uh, what I think when I think of this place, I just think of it as kind of a proof of concept factory. Like so, we can come here and say, look what we did. Everything we said we were going to do, we did it. The product works. It's the real deal. Uh, look at everything we've done in this small building. Uh, now give us the resources to scale because housing is such a big issue. And, and it's really good timing for the product. And there's so much demand, you know, we need to go bigger quickly uh, as you know, I think a lot of people have noticed. <laughs> so um, right now I'm looking to get us into a factory that is much, much, much bigger than what we're in now, uh, where we can really get the scale, where we can really get the automation and all that. So, you know, at the end of the day, I look at our, our core principles and I look at what else is out there. And I think that we're just so far ahead of everyone and I hope people can understand that, you know, when you look at traditional construction and you imagine a guy standing on a ladder with a nail gun, nailing pieces of wood together, and then think, you know, how does that compete with an efficient factory environment where you can actually ship the product out? There's no, there's no, there's no chance that they're going to have there with us if, if we execute. Um, you know, we're always going to have this standardized product that's repeatable in the factory. We have the ability to use lower cost, unskilled labor. Uh, we're going to have automation. We're going to have bulk purchasing power. We're going to have some vertical integration of our supply chain for some of the important items that we need to purchase. And when you look at all those efficiencies and more, I just don't see that traditional builders can keep up with that. And I hope that they will look at our product and say, oh, this is really a, a, a way better, easier, faster way for me to build. And I want to build with this product. And, you know, that's what's happened. People have noticed this and they're loving it and they want to get it as soon as they can because, you know, it's going to help with their business. So we did see that as well with DR Horton, who is the biggest home builder in the country. They came uh, to us actually when this building was empty and watched us set it up and get it going. And then they uh, invested in us and also are offering us other resources and are going to be a customer. So they, that's a really big compliment because these guys know what they're doing. They know how to build buildings and houses. And they uh, looked at us and said, you know, these guys might be onto something. We'd like to get in on it. 
kind of at this early stage. So that was just, you know, huge validation when they came in and we're really excited to have their, their help and, and all that. Um, you know, se separately for, from that investment, we, we have been raising money from investors. Um, initially, uh, uh, the, the, the Paolo uh, put in, you know, several million dollars of his own money to get Boxable up and running. And then once we realized, you know, we were ready to go and set up a factory, we started accepting investment. Uh, we did that all through our website, um, just from the web traffic and interest that we got. And we ended up, you know, now raising over a hundred million dollars through our website and, and it keeps coming in every day. So that's pretty amazing. We have over 15,000 investors. All of those people are recognizing that, oh shit, Boxable might be onto something and this could be really, really big with a really, really big upside. So I'm just going to now play this video. Uh, the factory that was filmed a few weeks ago, it's like a drone fly through. So you can see the, how the factory was a few weeks ago. That's where I'm sitting right now. All righty, stop sharing there. So as I said, that's, you know, our, our very small, oh, hold on a sec. Not YouTube playing in the background, gotta shut that off. All right, sorry, I had some, some audio interference there. So yeah, like I said, that is our uh, factory one. Uh, it's a very small, humble factory. Uh, and, you know, when I look out there and, and, and think about where we were a year ago uh, with basically an empty building, you know, it almost uh, brings a tear to my eye. I'm so, so proud of everyone. Um, so pretty cool stuff. I'm going to jump in and start asking questions now. We have now over 140 questions. So I'm sure a lot of repeats, but please throw your questions in. Um, and we will go. Uh, so someone here is saying, I sent you guys an email requesting a call and, uh, 
want to buy units right now. So, you know, for anyone that wants to buy houses, please put your name on the reserve page. It's boxable.com slash reserve, and we'll reach out when we're ready. Right now, we have so many people that want to buy this thing, uh, which is a cool problem for the company to have because we basically have endless demand, I believe. And, um, but, you know, I know people are a little frustrated that they, they want them yesterday. Trust me, I, I want to get them to you yesterday. And we're moving uh, as quickly as we can, uh, cautiously, um, and uh, uh, to get these things uh, cranking out. And we're going to keep scaling up. And we're absolutely looking to get into something that's way, way bigger than this. And we're going to try and make that happen. So, um, you know, also you can always reach out to us. There's a phone number on the website. You can go to hello at, uh, you can email hello at boxable.com. You can comment on our social. We have a customer service team that's basically replying to everyone 24 seven because we have so much inquiries because we have so much interest in what we're working on. Um, someone's asking what role will DR Horton play? So DR Horton's uh, given us you know, a small investment, which is, which is great, but not really the reason we, we like them. Um, they are, you know, have ordered a hundred houses. So first thing they're gonna do is go out and deploy all these houses and get a huge amount of feedback and, and test them and give us their input from their perspective as a builder and a developer. So that's extremely valuable to have such a competent and such a friendly partner doing that. They are also offering us other resources within their company. Uh, for example, they have given us access to their supply chain. So we now get to shortcut all of our purchasing instead of going out to the window company and saying, hey, my company is Boxwell. I want to order a thousand windows a year. Dior Horton's going to call and say, sell Boxable the windows and give them the best price. <laughs> so pretty cool to get that uh, and a bunch of other kind of resources like that. So, you know, huge partner, super excited to have them. Uh, someone else is asking about the franchise um, section of the website. So the, the basically the idea there is that Boxable would operate and control some large factories within the U.S., but internationally, we would bring on partners that would want to... Um, set up set up factories internationally and 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 we wouldn't necessarily want to do that all ourselves but we will take all of the formula that we're creating here and all the resources and the ecosystem and everything and share that with international partners to hopefully get factories going up all around the world so basically as soon as this thing is dialed in and perfect and i feel like we're ready i'm going to hit that list that we have which is really big and say hey guys do you want a factory in you know uh, the middle east do you want a factory in, uh, in africa do you want a factory in Australia? Australia, and uh, we're, we're going to end up with factories going up all around the world because this product works everywhere. And, you know, the economics are a little different in other countries. So you're going to have some places higher labor costs, some places lower labor costs, some places lower material costs. So, you know, the retail price will be a little bit different and it will be what's appropriate for that country. Uh, it won't necessarily be 50000 or, or whatever the, the price is going to be for the casita. It will be, you know, what whatever uh, makes sense in that country. And at the end of the day, our principles, I believe, will still be better than the principles they have site building. So, you know, even if you're in a really low labor country and you're building by hand and you're paying your laborers a dollar a day, well, guess what? Doing it in the factory is still going to be efficient. It's still going to be better. So no matter what the local numbers are, I think we're still coming out ahead. Someone else is asking about the big glass window in the front of the model home. So when we when we built that prototype house, uh, we had a sponsor. It was uh, Western Windows. They wanted us to showcase their big glass multi-slide window. So we cut a big hole in the side of the box and we'll stuck the window in. That is interesting because that's kind of part of the idea that Boxable is just providing this architecturally neutral universal building box that you know gets 90% of the heavy lifting done for the builder. And then they go to deploy it it's set up in a day and then they can just tweak it and modify it. They can add a roof, they can add a deck, they can cut a hole and put a bigger window in or whatever they want. But for now, we're fortunate enough to have so much demand for this initial product that we're just gonna sit here and produce casitas all day long, same thing. And you know, we're gonna, we're gonna sell those endlessly. So, um, you know, uh, uh, good, good position for us in to get started. How, many houses have we built after the government contract? Um, yeah, we've built quite a bit more since that contract was delivered. I don't know the exact number, nor do I necessarily want to disclose it, but you know, the factory's still on and cranking out houses and we're just selecting customers um, from our uh, wait list uh, strategically. Uh, we do have a few more uh, things 
hoops to jump through before we can just sell to anyone. One of those is the state approvals. So uh, every state has a modular building program. There's a lot of regulation related to building construction. So we're kind of in the final stages of getting those state approvals uh, before we can just sell to anyone. Also, we wanna be very careful to make sure the product is perfect before we just sell to just anyone. Uh, but we're getting there. Uh, we're getting the feedback from the, from the actual real world testing and all that. We're making a few tweaks to the product. And once we feel the quality is 100%, then we will you know, kind of open the, the floodgates. So some people are liking my hat. Uh, this hat is, should be available online soon and currently is actually available to buy uh, if you come and visit our factory. Uh, and by the way, you can visit our factory anytime. We have people visit every single day. You know, we've had easily over a thousand visitors since we opened this thing, you know, and, and that's pretty cool. Uh, you can go on the website and book a tour or you can just show up anytime like Monday through Friday, nine to five, and there will be keep someone here ready to show you the place. Uh, we'll show everyone everything because we're very open and transparent about what we're doing. Um, and we're also not we're even worried about anyone coming and spying on us because we feel that we're so far ahead. And we feel that even if someone copied what we're doing out there today, we would already be two steps ahead of them for what we have planned in the future. So that's pretty cool to, to, to be able to believe in that. Uh, someone's asking about automation in the factory. So right now we started with a very manual process to make sure everything was perfect before we started investing heavily into custom automation because you know we only have so much money and we don't want to blow it all on something that might change. So um, even that being said, what we're doing is so much different than what others are doing. We're already far ahead without that custom automation, but we do have a degree of automation that we get kind of off the shelf that's universal. And that's through different things, but mostly like CNC cutting equipment so that, you know, we can just buy a big CNC cutting table and that's going to automatically start cutting our pieces for us. And we don't even have to worry about doing a whole custom rollout of some custom automation solution. We get to take advantage of that right now. So like all the components within our walls, floors and ceilings, like the bulk of our innovation, all of those are cut and formed using automation right now. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then uh, as a next step, since we finished this government order, we are just now ordering a whole bunch of new stuff. So about, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to be signing to purchase about $10 million of equipment just in the next few weeks. And that's going to really help speed things up here. It's going to really help with the quality. It's going to be pretty, pretty cool. Few people asking about going public. So the idea for investors is that yes, Boxable does want to become a publicly traded company. Uh, no, I do not think that I would sell this company uh, at this stage. Uh, I think we need to become public to achieve you know, the scale of, of craziness that we, we think that uh, we, we can achieve here. So the idea is that we'll do a, a, a public offering at some point. Um, I'm not sure when, it may happen sooner than later. We are exploring a bunch of possibilities there. So we'll see what happens, but I can't really comment too much on, on those uh, on those details. Can you please sit still instead of swiveling in your chair? I'm getting seasick. Probably not, probably keep swiveling a little bit. Um, how much is the current raise from non-incredited investors, blah, blah. So uh, roughly we're over a hundred million dollars now. Um, I think we about 35 of that is from the Reg A. So then another 35 should come in from the Reg A. Uh, then we also did a 5 million Reg CF round. Uh, so those are kind of rough numbers of, of where the money's come from. Right now, we are looking to raise basically a billion dollars for this. And I think we're gonna get it. And we're looking at a whole bunch of different um, kind of uh, avenues to get that money. Uh, all different opportunities, we are fielding them. Uh, we get a tr tremendous, crazy amount of interest from everyone under the sun. So it's, it's pretty cool. What is the estimated delivery date of people on the wait list? So because the wait list is so big, the answer is, I don't know. And um, the reality is, we're not gonna be able to make a dent on that wait list until we get into another factory. So we are aggressively pursuing another factory that's much larger. And I think we'll do it sooner than everyone thinks, just like we did this sooner than everyone thinks. So uh, pretty cool. Um, and, uh, you know, 
please get your name on the wait list just so you're on there and then we'll we'll do our best to get to you but you know it is it's over 100,000 names on that list and each one of those names is not just one casita a lot of them are are two casitas or 100 casitas or 1000 casitas so the actual demand for casitas only is just so crazy we are um, you know never going to be able to meet it with just this one factory so the the plan goes far beyond this one factory if you're interested in helping us with second factories, please reach out uh, through the website. Um, there's a few forms on the website or you can just email us directly. Someone asked about the hurricane rating. Yes, the all the houses have high wind speed ratings on the walls. So that's another point where these buildings are superior. I don't know the exact miles per hour rating, but it's 100 plus mile per hour rating on all the walls. So for example, you know, these, buildings could be deployed in Miami, Florida. That's the worst wind conditions in the country. Are, is the plumbing and everything done before the box will arrive? Yes, everything is done in the house. So plumbing is done in the house, electrical is done in the house, kitchen, bathroom, that's all installed. All you have to do when you receive it is plug it in on site to your utilities. And you know maybe you, you, you know, add, build a deck around it. Maybe you build a driveway up to it, whatever kind of site work that you wanna do. What is the feedback we've had so far from the, the federal government order? Uh, really overwhelmingly positive. Um, they were able to set up the units without actually that much training or help, uh, which is great. Um, so, you know, they just went ahead. Actually, one, one day we got a call from them and they said, hey, we set up 20 units. And we were like, whoa, whoa, we didn't actually uh, uh, tell you to start yet or, or help you and you didn't call us while you were doing it. Uh, but they went ahead and just set them up and, and it was no problem. So we were really excited about that. Uh, we learned we learned a few things that that will be tweaking, uh, but nothing serious and everything is, is pretty smooth so far for the most part. How will stairways be added? So within the unit, the um, house, once it folds up, although it does fold up and we can press almost all the empty space in the house, there is a portion of the building that's not compressed. So if you look at the videos of it folding, you'll see there's like, six feet out of the 20 foot room that doesn't fold up. In this model, that's where we put kitchen bathroom. And in other models, that's where we can put staircase or other stuff. And um, you know, that that's uh, uh, kind of part of the magic of this. We get kind of the best world, best of both worlds of a modular and a panelized solution. Uh, and we're still able to finish everything on the factory. That's super important. Can we stack multi-story? Yes, we can. There's a video of our, on our YouTube about stacking the first prototypes multi-story. Um, how many stories we're gonna be able to go in this next gen of design, I'm not sure yet. We're still waiting for most of the testing back on that. Um, and I don't really necessarily anticipate doing too many multi-story structures early on, uh, just because we wanna make be super careful. And obviously there's much more risky when you put a multi-story up, but yeah, the building system is planned to be able to do that. I would like to one day get to five or six stories. Um, so that we can compete with all of the, the lumber framing because that's roughly how far a lumber framing uh, building goes up. Is there a time limit on investments? So you, uh, there's not necessarily a time limit, but it will sell out, I think, I hope, uh, because, because we are going pretty fast. We've set a few records. So you, know, you may miss it um, if you don't invest soon. That's what happened the last few times we did the crowd raise. Um, we sold out, for example, the Reg CF offering for five million in just uh, 13 days, and a lot of people were upset that they missed it. So, you know, if you want to invest, please go ahead and, and throw in an investment. It's not, you know, uh, super risky if you're just putting in, you know, a thousand dollars into it. So, um, you know, go ahead, go on the website, go on the Start Engine page, and you know, read read more about it. And uh, basically, we are selling shares for 80 cents each. The idea is that we would. Uh, be very successful here in developing the company and then eventually list on a stock market for a much higher share price at which point you would go li get liquidity if we're successful but that being said of course this is very risky early stage startup investment and you can lose all your money so don't invest more than you're willing to lose but i think that goes for everything in life how are we positioning the company to deal with copycat knockoffs Frankly, um, don't have a lot of confidence that any of these knockoffs are gonna get anywhere because there's just so much that goes into this. Additionally, we have a tremendous amount of patent protection. So I think we're at least over 50 patent filings now because everything we're doing is new. So, you know, within the US, 
we would be able to attack any copycats through those patent filings. We also have a significant first mover advantage. We have significant branding. There is a significant capital investment cost. So, you know, for someone to knock us off, you have to have, you know, hundred million dollars to, to do that. So it's someone with, you know, that much money going to make an irresponsible decision to knock up a company with a bunch of patents? Probably not. Um, additionally, you know, for example, like other products, you'll see knockoffs happen in China, but ours is a little different because you can't just, this is not a little widget that you can knock off in China and ship a thousand here in a container. Um, it's a little bit more difficult because shipping is still an issue. So I don't expect that. And you have a large amount of regulations around this. You can't just knock this off and go build with it. You need to go through a tremendous amount of testing and third-party approvals to actually be able to uh, do this. How are the economics profitability working with and without automation since we are starting with a more manual process? Well, interestingly, you know, the most the most significant efficiencies you get is not actually through automation, even though it looks cool. It's more to do with the assembly line. So taking each of the stages and breaking them down so that one guy out there, all his job is to ever do is install the window on the left wall. And he can do it with his eyes closed and there's no setup and breakdown time and he knows where his tools are and all that. So you get so much efficiency just through the assembly line. The automation will add like a little boost later on, but you know, we are, like I said, so far ahead of the traditional building methods because of the way we're building and the materials and the re-engineering. Like when I said before that we can build one wall in 20 minutes, there's no way a traditional building is doing a wall in 20 minutes. So we're far ahead just because our design is different. And then, you know, once you add in the assembly line, it gets better. And once you add in the automation down, down the road, it gets better. Um, and, you know, I just believe so much in all these principles that as long as we have the money to kind of push through all this startup stuff and all this development stuff, that we're gonna to get to a place where we're cranking these things off the line at a dramatically lower cost than everyone else. I think that's you know um, really gonna happen quickly for us. People are asking about a stock split. Um, stock split does not like increase the value of your investment or anything. So please don't be confused about that. Um, it, it's, it doesn't really, mean too much as far as like the total value of your investment so i urge you to just google it and learn a little more about that how many houses can this factory make well we have um right now producing about two houses per shift um, we think that this plant will get up to 10 per day just in this building that's what we planned it for and it's looking like that kind of makes sense but right now we're not trying to ramp up production and go crazy because we have to be safe and we have to be careful this isn't a new product it is kind of experimental no one's you know ever done it like this before so we want to make sure that we have adequate time to get real world field testing that we have adequate time to dial in all of our quality control and then once we're super co confident that everything's perfect then we're going to go crazy ramp it up build faster hire more people have more shifts um but you know, obviously it would be a disaster if we had like a product recall or something. So we just have to be super careful how we approach that. Um, um, but, you know, it's happening quickly. We're, we're quickly, you know, dialing everything in and we'll quickly be able to say, all right, everything's the way it's going to stay and we're going to ramp up as much as we can. How much notice will you get that your casita is ready? Uh, we're going to give people a lot of, a lot of notice. Um, when we start, there'll probably be an, an early rush um, and then after that, we'll, we'll have a nice little web interface set up where people can go in and check out and look for financing, look for local contractors, and it'll be a nice uh, process that we try to manage very carefully. Where are the bigger markets for boxing, domestic or international? Well, I think, you know, the rest of the world is bigger than the domestic world. So, um, you know, the opportunity is just crazy. It's crazy everywhere. The, the demand for housing, you know, the, the annual housing starts in the U.S., the, the the backlog of, of housing demand, the, the need for affordable housing. Um, it's insane. Like, so if this factory here makes 3000 houses in a year, we have an apartment building down the street here in Vegas that probably has 3000 units in it. So like all the houses we make in this whole factory could just go to one project or two projects. Um, so the, the demand here is just crazy. I could not think of working on anything else bigger than this, you know, as far as the total market size and the impact we're going to have and the level of disruption, because, you know, 
this is not even a, a small innovation that we have. This is an innovation that's going to allow one of the most old school and largest industries in the entire world to transition onto the factory line, onto the assembly line. A hundred years after everyone else went onto the assembly line, like you know, like I said before, auto meals, TVs, coffee mugs, everything's done on an assembly line. Housing's not. If we can make that happen, it's just like a, a mega leap forward. How is Factory 2 looking right now? I can't say it's a secret. Um, how are we dealing with supply chain issues and price inflation? Well, it's pretty ugly, but uh, nothing we haven't managed to overcome. Um, really a rough lesson like early on as far as like starting a house, starting a manufacturing company right in the middle of a pandemic and historical supply chain issues and shipping container prices going up a thousand percent and you know blockages at the port and price inflation, everything's gone up 20, 50% because of this, uh, the, the, the federal government. And, you know, all of this stuff is, is uh, crazy, but we learned these hard lessons right away and it's gonna make us stronger so that now we're more prepared. Uh, and, and we know like, all right, these things could happen. So we have to be ready for it. So that, that kind of worked out well for us, I think, to make us stronger. How sustainable is the product? Well, it is crazy sustainable. This, this product is very uh, eco-friendly. It's very green. Uh, not only just like the, the energy reduction that you get from the high insulation values of the walls, but even the factory production versus site production. Uh, we're actually going to be coming out with a full lifetime cycle analysis and, and carbon reduction um, numbers and report on all that stuff. These, these houses are so fucking green. Right now, uh, I said the other day, the only way we can make them greener probably is by painting them green. So uh, we'll have all the data to back that up soon. I know that's important to, to people um, and uh, it's cool that it, that it worked out that way. Sorry, I'm just reading through a lot of comments here. So there's a lot of, a lot of repeats. Um, does the box will have a toilet? This is a very common question. Uh, I'm not sure why. Um, but yeah, there's a toilet and there's a bathroom and there's photos of that all over the, the website and stuff. <laughs> um, what are our shipping costs relative to a traditional size factory built home? I don't know the exact number, but it's a huge difference. Like we're talking for a boxable, just like regular trucking rates. That's not regular trucking rates when you have a wide load, when you have follow cars with flags, when you have police escorts. Uh, we've shipped a few wide loads before. And it's a total nightmare. It's not scalable. It's not going to work. And, you know, I think interestingly, actually, if you read the public filings of the bigger manufactured home companies, like I think like Cavco and, and Champion are the public ones, it says in there, literally said in the SEC filing, we have small regional factories because it's cost prohibitive for us to ship farther than a few hundred miles from our factory. Um, so that's like, uh, it's a done deal. I feel like, you know, they, they'll never be able to break beyond a certain level that we will just be able to destroy um, because we can actually scale production, you know? And that's the big innovation here that, that everyone should understand. Uh, beyond anything else, like our building materials or anything else, um, our shipping enables scaled factory production. So because our shipping is enabling that scaled factory production, we're gonna be able to slam the prices down, hopefully way lower than, than anyone else can ever compete with. And, you know, it's, it's, it looks to me like we're going to end up so far ahead. Uh, and, and I'm really excited about that and, and about all of our other principles. Are we hiring another company like Porsche for further automation? So Porsche helped us set up the factory one, helped us plan it. They helped us fix it up once it was planned, once it was live. Um, yes, we are hiring other companies for further automation integration. There's a lot of great companies that do that. We've interviewed with dozens of them as we plan out kind of the next stages of this factory and the next stages of that factory. We do have a lot of in-house engineers and we're getting more and more, um, but definitely have need that third party help as well. So, um, you know, that being said, uh, we are also always looking for employees. Please check out the website, email hiring at boxable.com if you wanna work here. Everyone that work here needs to be in person in Vegas. So next question. The feds are raising interest rates. And as you know, blah, 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 disaster, world, gloom and doom. Uh, yeah, 
So I think that no matter what happens, Boxable is going to be fine because it's not like we're here selling a luxury product that spending is going to diminish for. We're selling the most affordable product. People are still going to need housing. It's not going to disappear. Um, and frankly, I think a recession helps us because the, the way things were, you know, everyone was getting so fat and happy. People were making money on ridiculous nonsense. No one wanted to work. Um, prices are going crazy. Every manufactured product is on allocation, like all these problems that happen as a result of, um, you know, too much money in the system is starting to, to go the other direction now. And I think Boxable will do very well in that scenario. You know, we'll be able to pick up talent. We'll be able to actually buy stuff. Uh, you know, like, like a few months ago, you know, we couldn't even buy stuff. And that wasn't just us. Like, you know, even these bigger companies that I was talking to, these bigger uh, manufactured housing people, like they were going to Home Depot, like big, big company names. They were going to Home Depot to buy electrical wires because they couldn't buy it anywhere else because of the increased money supply it was eating up all the all the supply of the, the goods and services. So as that you know starts to reverse, I think you know we're going to be able to really take advantage of that and, and really end up in in a great place. So you know whichever way things go, I think Boxable does great. Housing's uh, <laughs> here to stay. People are going to need houses. Um, all right, let me keep going through these questions. Are the, the washer, fridge, washer, dryer already in the unit? Yes, they are. And they're included in the price for now. We are putting everything in the house that we can to ship it. And we can fit in the fridge, the washer, dryer, all those appliances, the oven, that's all done in the unit before it ships. So that's pretty cool. All right. Inspection process. So uh basically we go through several different programs to get these approved on a regulatory level uh one is rv so we can classify them as rvs that helps things we already have that that gives us a 50 state approval to call a casino an rv the next is the modular program so that means that the house complies to all the existing building codes that you would see on a site built home in that state so that's like a state by state um state by state uh program. Uh, we're starting with Arizona, California, Nevada for that. That includes um, third party testing on all of our stuff. So, you know, structurally, uh, energy, uh, fire, all of that we're going through third party testing. So like we'll send them our wall panel, they'll break it 50 different ways, measure the data on how strong it was, and then they'll take all that data and use it as part of our approval for what we can and can't do with these homes. So we're getting through all that. And then additionally, once that's done, we will have third party inspectors who are approved by the states in the factory at all times, watching every hospital. So, you know, if you think about a traditional home versus a factory built home, these traditional homes are not gonna be on the quality level because A, we're doing the same thing over and over. We're gonna get really good at it. We're in a factory, we're in a controlled environment. Uh, if you've ever seen how a traditional home is built, it's mostly custom work. You don't have a lot of supervision. You have you know, all kinds of different stuff going on, weather delays. There's no way a site built home is going to get to the quality level that we can get to when we're just in here all day dilating, dialing it in. Um, so, you know, I expect these homes to be way higher quality, uh, not just because they're built better and more accurately, but also just because of our, our design and our and our engineering and the materials we use, I think we end up way ahead. Some people are asking about the cost per foot of the home, and this is like a common confusion that I see. Uh, if you look at the uh, cost to build a home and base it on a per square foot price instead of the total price, it can be a little misleading because, you know, whether you have a 400 square foot house or a 4,000 square foot house, you probably only still have one kitchen and the kitchen costs a lot more. So the bigger the house, the lower the square foot price goes. And that's gonna be the same for Boxable. And right now, the per square foot highest price on a Boxable is high because everything's packed into a small amount of square footage. Uh, that being said, our unit is still priced far below almost anyone else on the market. I've looked at every single alternative under the sun. I haven't found anything lower cost yet. Someone here uh, asks, they said, DR Horton has many negative reviews online. Does that concern you? Uh, no, I don't, I don't care about that. Um, of course, when you build as many houses as you, as you do, some people are going to get upset. It's just the nature of it. And that being said, DR Horton's business model is 
they use subcontractors to build stuff. So there's going to be kind of quality issues, but they're the number one builder for a reason. They're doing a good job of it. And, um, you know, they also are not taking over our business. They're just helping us with resources and becoming a customer. And I think they're going to do a great job and bring a tremendous amount of, um, you know, resources and expertise and all that kind of thing. How will this house hold up in a tornado? <laughs> I think, you know, if we, if we get a tornado strike on a house, I, I think it's going, it's going up. It's, go, it's going to fly up in the air. Um, but uh, that, that being said, the walls can handle the, the high winds. The question is, how is it affixed to the ground? So, you know, I'm sure they have higher requirements to, or foundations to affix things to the ground, but that's not really our department. We're just offering the room module, how the builder affixes it to the ground will determine if it gets sucked up uh, to in Kansas. So um, should be good on that. Someone's asking about the ROI on the investment. So basically if you invest in Boxable, you are just betting that nothing less than that we end up uh, as an absolute monster, full world domination, that we can build houses faster and cheaper than anything else in the world and anyone else in the world, and that everyone wants to use our building system, and that we expand rapidly throughout the world and build, you know, hundreds of thousands of houses. That's the bet you're making. So, you know, if you think anything less is going to happen, don't invest because that's what I that's what I'm betting is going to happen. So that being said, there's not really a fixed ROI. I'm not, this is not like a, a fixed return investment. I'm basically saying, you know, we have a better way to build. We're going to take over with that better way to build, and we're eventually going to go public on the stock market so that hopefully the valuation you buy in at now, we end up at a much higher valuation later on the stock market after we're successful and you get liquidity. Um, so, you know, the, the share price is 80 cents now, you're betting that we're successful and the share price is higher in the future. Uh, and like I mentioned, this is a, a big bet. It's a big uh, upside. It's a big market. We have a big valuation now. This, is, this, this has to be a big company or it's just, it's just a failure. So, um, all right, let's see what else we have here. Uh, also, I am running a little bit short on time. I know we still have a lot of people watching and I'll try to get through the rest of the questions. There's a lot of repeats, so it'll just take me a minute to kind of scroll through it all. Are we looking for celebrities, brand ambassadors, and social media influencers to advertise our company? Yes. We get a lot of those organically, like a lot of people just talk about us and are interested in us organically, but we totally want to have um, help spreading the word from people who have big followings. So I'd urge anyone who's interested to reach out and um, we'd love to work with you in helping spread the word. Here's a good one. Uh, standardization, of course, it's the biggest cost savings, but at the same time, property owners want custom building. Very important. And that's pretty cool because, you know, if you look at most other factory built housing, you don't actually get a lot of customization. You just get these like double wide, single wide manufactured homes. What we're saying is that although we have these standardized rooms, you can stack and connect those later to build custom buildings and also add different trim, different siding. So we think you can build most buildings most of the time with our system, but, you know, within reason. If you want to make the room two feet wider, the answer is no. But if you want to make it uh, stack and connect the rooms to build a totally custom uh, configuration, yeah, you can do that. If you want to add on different exterior trim, yeah, you can do that. If you want to add on a different roof pitch, yeah, you can do that. So, you know, does anyone need the room to be exactly two feet wider? Most of the time, no. So, you know, we don't care about that. But while, while we will still have this standardized production of these repeatable room modules, uh, later on, let's say, we're building a kitchen box, we're building a bedroom box, we're building a living room box, we're building uh, all these different boxes and a few different sizes, a few different trim packages for each. And then you have all these boxes, you start stacking, connecting them together. There's like infinite configurations of those. So, you know, you really can do most buildings uh, without having that exact precise customization where you end up blowing all the money. Uh, and then, you know, if people want to do that, they can always use our building system to get the bulk of the building done and they can kind of stick train customize uh, things as well on there. Uh, I am just scrolling through a lot of repeat questions. So give me a second here. 
Um, someone else asked about a showroom. Yes, we allow for um, the uh, visitors anytime to stop by or go on our website and book some time for a tour. Uh, we do tours all day, every day. Uh, here's one, what is a new one. What is the foundation requirement? So our boxes don't actually do the foundation. You can just throw them on the grass and unfold them. Uh, but in most cases for a permanent use case, you're gonna want to connect them uh, to the, the foundation. And in that case, our units are basically gonna bolt to the any foundation type. So, um, um, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna uh, whether it's a stem wall or, or a slab or a basement or pillars, um, whatever it is, our unit's gonna bolt to it. It's gonna be compatible with that. So that's pretty cool. Here's, here's another person asking about the valuation of the company. So as I said before, you know, this is a big bet. You are, you are gonna, if you're investing in Boxable, you're, in, you're betting nothing less than full world domination. Uh, that, that's what I expect for the company. Um, if we can rapidly produce housing at a lower cost than anyone has done before without compromising on quality, what's that worth? How big is that? It's really big. It's really, really big. So that's the, that's the bet you're making if you invest in the company is that, you know, this is such a huge game changer. Um, so please, you know, keep, keep reading about us, keep looking at, you know, YouTube videos and, and understanding more about what the, what the vision is here. So you can see just how big of an impact this could have on the entire world, um, because I want to dramatically lower housing costs for the entire world. And I think we can do it. And uh, pretty much every day that goes by, I think we can more and more likely that we can do it uh, because, you know, things are, are going well so far. Someone else asking about the uh, off gassing of the buildings. So like, you know, they've had issues before with other manufactured housing and other housing about like off gassing uh, in the buildings. Um, we don't, none of our materials really have an off gassing issue there. The only thing you have to look out for is uh, cabinets. They're usually the culprit, um, kind of like the smell it gives off after you install like a new piece of furniture or cabinet. Uh, so we're gonna do third party testing on that to prove that we don't have any issues like that. Is an accredited investor the only way to invest? No, right now investment is open to anyone, regardless of your accreditation status, regardless of your income, the minimum investment amount is thousand dollars. You can go on the website or you can go on Start Engine and you can submit your investment through there. So please, you know, go ahead and check that out, read more. Uh, we have a phone number on our website for investor questions. We have an email for investor questions. Uh, we have a great Facebook group that's emerging. Uh, boxable investors. I think it's got like 5,000 members. I'm on there all the time asking, uh, answering questions as well. Um, so please, you know, learn more about it and feel free to buy shares. If you're interested, it's 80 cents per share right now. I went to Google Earth with your address and the factory did not show up. That's because it's new. <laughs> it's really new. Uh, but it's here. There it is. How are they heated? Uh, the houses use a mini split system where um, it's basically, instead of using a ducted system where you're blowing air around the house, you just have the little blower on the wall and then you bring the refrigerant lines to the blower. It's much more efficient, it's much more sanitary and it's much more compact. That's why we need it. Build a better mouse trap and the world will beat a path to your door by Emerson. Cool quote. I think it's true because people are beating down the door. Um, it's crazy. I mean, just just the uh, amount of interest we have is like always blowing my mind. Um, like for example, if you look on our Instagram page, we have half a million followers on our Instagram page. We have more than probably every other factory built house combined. Uh, why is that? Like, not that many people are interested in housing. It's not that cool. It's not a celebrity. It's not a sports team. But they're loving it and. Uh, you know, maybe that speaks to the marketing skills and it also speaks to the product and people are reacting to the reality of this, which is, you know, this is the real deal. Uh, people, so many people are interested because so many people are looking at this and recognizing, holy shit, this is the real deal. This thing could change the world. So pretty amazing as things continue to snowball. Here's a question about um, investing and how that, 
process works. So once you invest, you submit your money, um, you have to wait for a few things to happen. One, the funds have to clear. So the, the escrow company that holds the money, uh, they wait a few weeks before we can even take the money because they have to make sure you don't know, reverse your credit card or something. Um, also, for some people, they're gonna ask you for more documents. So usually, like legally, we have to verify everyone's identity, but for some people, um, that doesn't happen automatically. So then we have to ask for more documents, like we have to ask, like send your ID. So you may get an email asking to, you know, send your, send your ID over. So that, that can happen also. Then uh, the question is, when, do, when does Boxable click close on your investment and countersign your contract and send it back to you? So after those other steps are done, then Boxable needs to do that. So, you know, please just invest, then hang out, make sure to check your emails, look for emails from Start Engine or invest on Boxable.com asking for, you know, more info. And, um, you know, if, if you ever get concerned or don't hear back, you know, just feel free to email us, invest at boxable.com or, or call, and then we'll look it up, look you up and see if there's any outstanding steps. When do you envision the, the boxable factory being able to produce a boxable factory? Wow. Wow. That's really trippy there. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you know, that's a great idea. I think the next boxable factory should be a factory that builds factories. Um, but joking aside, that's what we're doing right now. Our product isn't actually the houses. Our product is the factory that builds the houses. So we're perfecting that product and then we'll start, you know, putting copies of those everywhere, hopefully, and, and grow this thing really fast. Due to the fact that this is a growth company with a valuation, many growth companies, in the fact, have reduced their valuations, blah, blah, valuation. So um, another thing to say about valuation is you have to look at the market size that the company is in. So if I was going to say um, I, have a new, um, I have a new charging dongle company, and the total charging company dongle it, market is $3 billion. That's all the size of all the companies that sell charging dongles. Um, and my valuation is 3 billion. That would be too high because there's no upside, you know, unless you create a new market. Um, but when you look at um, valuations of companies, it, it's not like to like, like you don't say, oh, this company is worth 1 billion and this company is worth 1 billion. They both have the same upside. No. Um, when you look at Boxable, this is you know, pretty much the biggest industry in the world. I think it's $10 trillion building construction around the world. Um, you have to look at the upside and the scale of what we're doing. This is not a small scale. This does not take a small amount of money to get up and going. Um, if we're right, and if we succeed, and if we execute, uh, it's just so ridiculously big. Um, and not only is the market so big, but our innovation is such a game changer that I think it enables us to take such a big portion of that market if we can scale this thing. So, you know, people saying like, oh, you only sold a hundred homes or you're only this big. That's not the point. You know, your revenues are only this. That's not the point. The point is, what do you think the upside is? So does the bet make sense? And uh, as I keep saying, the upside here is crazy. Um, you know, I was working on, big projects before this. And I gave up those big projects because there's nothing bigger than this that I could even think of um, to do, to work on. So we have very grandiose um, ambitions for this and grandiose expectations as well. And I urge everyone to keep you know reading about what we're doing. So hopefully they can understand. We're not just building tiny houses. We're not, we don't just have a, a regular a tiny house that looks different. Um, this is going to be a quantum shift in all building construction on the planet if I have my way. <clears throat> Some other uh, nice comments in here. Some nice comments about my hair. Yes, it's a, it's a beautiful golden mullet. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, just going to keep scrolling through here and then uh, I'll probably have to get off soon and go to a meeting. Um, 
some more people asking about Elon Musk as usual, and I'm sorry, but I can't just can't comment at all on Elon Musk, but you can just look around online to kind of figure out what happened with that. Who will hold the shares that I buy when I invest? Well, um, they will be, basically you'll have a contract that shows you have the shares, the signed contract, that, those will be your shares. Um, you, we will also have a, a transfer agent company that we also will have a, a transfer agent company that basically allows you to log in and view your shares like kind of like an account where you can where you can check them out and then eventually if we do go public and we're successful those shares will be transferred to a brokerage of your choice so it could go to e-trade or td ameritrade or whatever you want any customer reviews of people living in them uh, unfortunately no because pretty much everyone we sold to is you know, on a top secret military base. So um, uh, uh, as soon as we, um, pretty soon we'll, we'll, we'll start having uh, actual real customer reviews where, where people are getting houses that they're living in or that they own and they can start doing that. And that'll be really cool to do. Also, we're planning to have some casitas set up nearby here that people can kind of rent on Airbnb. So if you want to come visit the Boxable factory, maybe you could just stay in a Boxable for the night. Uh, so we're getting that going. That'll be that'll be pretty cool. Um, we um, more questions about how the, what the buildings are made of. So basically, they are laminated panel design. So we have these big materials, which actually you can see uh, right out here. These white stuff. That's the EPS foam. That's the core of the building. And then uh, on this uh, on this shelf here, there's some of the, the skins of the building. There um right there those are some more skins for the wall panels uh basically we have these laminated panels they're composite panels they're incredibly strong um, we get all these benefits from using them you know energy efficiency wind rating the speed to, to rapidly produce them and uh it's a uh, pretty pretty cool way to build um, but you know what it, it doesn't even matter what's in the building right now because no matter what the shipping innovation is still there. So we could always change what the buildings are made out of, but the shipping innovation is still there. And that's plainly obvious for anyone to look at and see without even digging into what the walls are made out of. So we do have a bunch of upgrades planned for what the walls are actually consist of. Uh, that'll be exciting as we roll those out to make things better. Are you worried about labor shortages? Um, you know, we were, I was when we started hiring, but it turned out that we didn't have that problem at all. Everyone wanted to work here. Everyone thought it was cool. Everyone was happy when we got here. Um, we had people lining up to work here. Now we have, now we exist basically a word of mouth. You know, we have high quality employees. They go and tell their high quality friends that they want to, that they should work here and they come and work here. And, uh, we have had no problem hiring people. Um, right now it's like about 200 people. We'll see how that changes once we want to go to 2000 people. Um, but uh, yeah. And yep, we are hiring. So please check out the website and go and email us if you want to hire, if you want to work here, we are hiring people only in Las Vegas. You need to be in Las Vegas to work here for basically most all positions. How would resale work? Um, are these like a traditional home or a manufactured home? So we are not building to the manufactured HUD, 50 state HUD code. We're building to a higher level than that. So therefore we can qualify for the 50 state HUD or the modular or anything else that is gonna exist in the future. And um, once you permanently affix a box book seat up to the foundation, it goes from being personal property to real property. And then, you know, the, the value of the home is tied to the land and that's kind of, you know, that's kind of the controlling factor there. So it's not going to be much different than a traditional home, except that maybe one day we receive acknowledgement that our buildings are higher quality and stronger and last longer and cost less to insure and all that kind of stuff. If you invest in Boxable, your shares are not liquid and you cannot sell them for now if we are successful in the future and become traded on a stock market then you will get the ability to sell them in liquidity so just understand that this is an illiquid investment there is a high degree of risk you can lose all your money if you invest um, and basically you are 
taking a gamble and a roll of the dice. So that's just something that you need to be aware of. Are you investing in 3D printers at all? What do you think about 3D printed housing? So now we'll take a minute to talk shit about 3D printed housing. <laughs> because, you know, there's a lot of hype about this and I'm sure there's a place for it in the ecosystem, but it's not really solving too many problems because yes, they can extrude concrete to make walls, but that's not a house. A house takes much more than that. And our idea is that everything needs to be done on the assembly line where it's low cost and efficient, but if you're 3D printing, it can't be done on the assembly line. So guess who's back on the job site? All the guys that Boxpool is trying to get rid of, the plumber, the electrician, the carpenters, the flooring guy, the every single other person is back. And you've added into the mix a multi-million dollar piece of equipment and a learning curve for all those guys. So now the electrician, when he comes in to wire the house, you can say, what the hell is this? I've never seen a, a walls like that before. I don't know what to do. And by the way, I'm charging you double. So I don't see that it makes any sense at all for the, the bulk of housing to 3D print. Uh, if you could actually 3D print, like as if it was Star Trek, and you could 3D print sheetrock and flooring and cabinets and electrical and actually just 3D print a whole house, great. That, would, that sounds great. Um, but, you know, 3D printing, extruding concrete walls, I don't think that helps. Uh, maybe in some use cases where you do like some third world housing where they're just little huts with only concrete walls. Uh, maybe that might be cool, but uh, don't really see it being very helpful uh, other than that. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes uh, for everyone. Um, but I think, you know, Boxable is very far ahead. And as far as like us 3D printing in the factory, which some other people are talking about, it doesn't make sense either because when you're doing production, you're not printing. Like there's other ways to produce stuff faster than printing. Printing is like good for kind of custom stuff. It's good for prototyping stuff. We do have 3D printers here. We use it to prototype small stuff. Like we'll use it to, to prototype a plastic part, but then we'll go and get a mold or an extrusion um, done where literally it just, you know, produces it extremely fast. Uh, three printer is never going to be fast. It's for kind of custom stuff. So, you know, I'm calling BS on that. There's there's a lot of buzz words with three D printing, and it's just I don't I don't see that it makes sense. Maybe I'm wrong, but probably not. All right, full world domination. Yes, that's it. Like I said, don't invest in Boxable unless you think we're going we're going to have full world domination. <laughs> Uh, Core Connects is the transfer agent. So after you invest, you will eventually get a login for uh, coreconnects.com. Do our houses have a warranty? Yes, they do. Um, but I don't think we've identified exactly what it will be yet. What's the difference between preferred and common stock? Common stocks have voting power. Preferred stock, stock has liquidation preference. So for example, all the investors get preferred stock. Almost all the investors get preferred stock. And that just means that if the company goes bankrupt and it's all liquidated and sold off, the investors get paid off before I get paid off. So that's the way it should be. Oh, wow, I'm at the end of the questions. That's it. One last question here about the total daily raise amount on Start Engine. So yeah, it says like 15 million on Start Engine or something, but we're also raising primarily on our own website and also on Republic. So that means that the total is not accurate on Start Engine. We've raised much more than that. We've, uh, as far as the Reg A goes, we've raised at least 35 million out of the 70. And then the total raised for the company is, is over 100 million. Um, so occasionally we'll, we'll update that number. Um, but anyway, I got to go back to work. Thank you everyone for joining. Really appreciate your interest in Boxable. Feel free to reach out to us on any platforms, email us, call us. Uh, we're happy to um, answer more questions anytime uh, make sure to check us out on the social media because we are just constantly updating everything um, you know if you want to know what's going on day to day follow the instagram follow the youtube as we put out updates and uh, again you can go to start engine and invest you can also click the clickable link to the offering circular if you want to read that in the description of the video 
And uh, thank you so much for your time and your interest in Boxable and uh, big things to come. Thank you.